So hello everyone and good morning again. I am so happy that you're able to join us this morning for the Saskatchewan Construction Safety Association um, information session. I am looking forward to hear a lot, to learn a lot, just like yourself. So my name is Ariel and I'm, I am an employment counselor here at Saskatoon Open Door Society. And it's my pleasure to welcome Sherry Tor. Let me make sure I pronounce this right. It's Tor Gerson. And she is the safety training manager at SCSA, as most first would call it. And she's been with them for the last 10 years. So Terry is very experienced. She has a lot of knowledge and <clears throat> she's knowledgeable when it comes to training programs. And Sherry will be the main presenter. Sherry also has her, um, her safety advisor, Kiran, with her this morning. And Kiran has been with SCSA for the last two years. When it comes to everything safety training related, Kara knows what he's doing. And he completed his NCSO program. I guess Sherry will tell you more about NCSO, what is that and what it means and the benefits of having it. So at this time, I will hand over to the team from CSA. Over to you, Sherry and Kiran. Thanks, Ariel, for the warm welcoming introductions. And thanks everyone for attending today's session. Um, we're going to speak to you a little bit more about the programs and services that SCSA offers here and kind of fill you in on any questions that you may have at the end of the session here. So the purpose, um, uh, as Ariel mentioned, my name is Sherry Torgerson. You did pronounce that right, so great job. Uh, I'll be leading today's presentation with um, support from Karen Greening. He is a safety advisor at SCSA and also has a wealth of knowledge around our programs and services, as Ariel mentioned uh, the purpose of today's presentation, I'm just going to share my screen here with you guys. So the purpose of the presentation today is to inform you on the services and training offered by SCSA, which will assist you in your career with construction within the construction industry and health and safety here in Saskatchewan. For the sake of time today, as Ariel had mentioned, we just ask that you make note of your questions throughout this session. And we'll have a Q&A period at the end of the session here, and we'll be able to answer all of your questions. So what does safety mean to you? I'm just gonna let you guys think about that for a moment. So safety can mean many different things to people. Um, a lot of things that first pop up are family, going home safe at night, knowing that loved ones are safe, looking out for each other on the job site, protecting yourself and others, zero injuries, joint effort, complying with legislation, being alert on the job, and being cautious. So who are we? SCSA was established in March of 1995, and since inception, we have been committed to injury prevention within the industry. SCSA is industry-funded, not-for-profit organization. We're funded through the WCBB rate codes, in an effort to maintain the health and well being of workers within Saskatchewan. So, um, these industries within the B rate code include construction trades, residential construction, commercial, and industrial construction. These industries all are members with SCSA and they make regular con contributions to WCB, which helps support SCSA in providing the services that we offer. And in turn, as members, they receive additional services at no cost and training at a reduced cost. Anyone can take courses at SCSA, whether you're a member or not. Um, and we'll go over the cost associated with the training that we do offer at the end of the session here today. Today, SCSA serves nearly 10,000 member companies province-wide. And now we're just gonna go over the mission and vision statement of. SCSA and the mandate just kind of gives an overview of what SCSA does. So our mission is to serve workers, employers, and the public by promoting safety within the construction environment. And we lead the development of safety culture through the delivery of training programs, advisory services, and public education towards building safety, safer communities. 
Our vision is to provide the safest construction environment within Canada, and our mandate is to provide safety-related programs and services to the construction industry that result in sound foundations for a safe and healthy and profitable industry. At SCSA, we support members through safety training, safety programs, advisory services, and resources and tools to assist the organizations with their health and safety programs. And we'll tell you a little bit more as we go along throughout today's presentation. Uh, unique to SCSA, we offer a safety construction orientation training program. It's also known as SCOT. You may be familiar with this. Uh, it is an interactive web-based program that's accessible through the SCSA website. Um, it is compatible and user-friendly, can be used on tablets, iPads, um, laptops. It trains individuals on the construction safety basics, so it prepares uh, workers prior to entering construction sites. Um, it does include an introductory model that, a module that provides important information helping participants to navigate through the training experience. So it just kind of eases the whole training experience for individuals. Um, it does include 13 modules. Uh, one in particular focuses on women's generics. So this course or program does include a generic women's certificate along with the Scott certificate. The certificate is valid for five years from completion date of taking it. And this course alone is $50 straight across the board for anyone, whether you're a member or a non-member. Um, some common topics that are included in this course include workplace law, hazards on the job site, um, and then just basics of uh, industry topics specific to power mobile equipment, fall protection, frame scaffolding, ladder safety, and excavating and trenching. SCSA currently offers 16 instructor-led courses. Um, today, we're going to touch on seven of these courses, including fall protection, aerial work platform, awareness, frame scaffolding awareness, confined space and respiratory protection awareness, Women's 2015 Train the Trainer, Leadership for Safety Excellence and Safety Management. So we'll dive right in here, starting with fall protection. Did you know that falls can occur most often from ground level? Fall hazards are everywhere on a construction site. Um, this one day course is designed to prepare workers for the hazards and safety measures applicable to working at heights. This course prepares workers on the types of fall protection systems, um, what a written fall protection plan is and the legislative requirements around that and the different ele elements that it encompasses. It also prepares workers for inspections and donning of harnesses. Um, it is a fairly interactive course. So uh, as a participant in the class, you would actually be required to go through and carry out an inspection of the harness as well as donning the harness. And the instructor will walk you through all of that and just make sure that you're doing it right. Um, just a good opportunity to prepare workers for the work site and ensure that they have proper fitting equipment and they know their rights and responsibilities when it comes to working at heights. Um, an additional component to this course is ladder safety. Um, this is to just to ensure that participants walk away with the required information for working um, at heights such as ladders, aerial work platforms, boom lifts, and general construction work site equipment. Next, we have aerial work platform awareness. Um, this is a half day course in Saskatchewan. It is a legislative requirement to have 16 hours of training combined practical experience and theory-based experience. And that's uh, just to ensure that workers are um, informed on the hazards and have that knowledge base when working on equipments as there are quite a bit of hazards involved with working with area work platforms. Um, this course is designed for supervisors and workers. Uh, throughout the course, you'll learn about legislative responsibilities as a worker, employer, and a supervisor, and just overall the legislative requirements around working on aerial work platform equipment. Um, you'll learn about the different types of aerial work platforms, the different types of hazards that you could encounter and how to identify those hazards. So providing you with an awareness around hazards when working with these types of equipment. You'll also gain an understanding of the maintenance and repair of aerial work platforms and the pre-operational inspection. So prior to using any of this equipment in accordance with legislation, it does require pre-operation inspection. So you would walk through that in the class. 
In frame scaffolding, um, scaffolding is quite common in the construction industry. It enables workers to work at height and provide superior protection um, over ladders when it's used properly. It's an important safety, um, some important safety considerations for working on scaffolding include selection of appropriate scaffold, careful assembly and regular inspections. This one day course is for supervisors and workers that are required to work on frame scaffolding equipment. And the focus of this course is to review and gain an understanding of the legislative responsibilities and requirements in accordance with Saskatchewan Occupational Health and Safety Acts and Regs. Um, this is something, a topic that you'll see in most of our courses, just ensuring that um, workers do have an understanding around legislation within Saskatchewan, um, what their requirements are for working with particular equipment and what your role and responsibility is, is in, as a worker, supervisor, employer, whatever role you may be filling. Also in the frame scaffolding course, you will learn how to um, identify hazards and control those hazards and how to identify the different components of frame scaffolding and the techniques for an ins inspection of frame scaffolding. This course doesn't certify anyone to set up scaffolding. Um, it's just an awareness course based for workers that will be working off of frame scaffolding. So um, if you are considering taking on a job where you'll be working around confined spaces, you may be wanting to look at a confined space respiratory protection awareness course. Um, this is a one day course that SCSA offers. Um, and it's designed for those entering, supervising or acting as a safety watch person, whether it be a worker or a supervisor. This course prepares confined space workers to work in and around such environments and will inform you on the hazard, on hazardous versus non-hazardous confined space environments. And you'll also learn the appropriate and necessary controls for entering a confined space. You'll, be com you'll become familiar with the different types of hazards in a confined space and the requirements of the diff and the different elements of a pre-entry confined space plan. Um, so to enter a confined space within Saskatchewan, um, employers are required to have a pre-entry plan for workers to follow through with before they do um, enter a confined space. And different types of respiratory protection. This is a critical component of the um, course as it just kind of provides workers with the knowledge and understanding of what different types of respiratory protection there is. Um, what the purpose of each is and kind of proper selection and maintenance when using these respirators and protective equipment. And Kieran, do you have anything to add to that? I hit the nail on the head there, but the types of respiratory protection is really important. Just knowing because what, what defines a hazardous confined space versus a regular confined space is the, an airborne contaminant being present. So the use and selection of respiratory protection is hugely important. And this is a great course for anyone that's gonna be going into an area where not even a confined space, but you need to know about respiratory protection as well. Perfect, thanks, Karen. Um, did you know that all workers exposed to hazardous materials must be trained on both generic and site-specific WMIS? Um, in accordance with Saskatchewan legislation, this is a requirement. So for that reasoning, SCSA has a Women's 2015 Train the Trainer course, which just makes it easier for employers to be able to train their workers on both site-specific and generic WMIS. So this is a one-day course offered for any worker who's possibly responsible for development of a WMIS program, or they could just be training the WMIS um, worker training as well. This course provides participants with the knowledge around both generic and site-specific training as required by Saskatchewan LEDGE. Um, it covers the four components of WMIS, including hazard identification and classification, labels and the different elements, and the SDS elements and purpose of the SDSs, as well it goes into the techniques of, for educating workers on both site-specific and generic WMIS. As a complementary kind of package to um, prepare anyone who is facilitating this course on site, SCSA does provide the trainers with worker kits, which um, comes along with a PowerPoint, worker books, the quizzes, and any activities that will be used for training. 
Um, and we also have our advisors here that can help support um, anyone that has questions around preparing or building their WMIS program. And then we have the Leadership for Safety Excellence. This is a two-day course um, and it prepares managers and supervisors for the worksite um, on how to effectively manage their health and safety program. Throughout this course, participants will learn how to use the acts and regulations and the legislative responsibilities of supervisors and as well as their responsibilities on the job site. It's really critical that they do know this um, and that they are complying with legislation um, or they could run into um, troubles with Saskatchewan, uh, the occupational health and safety uh, representatives. As a practical approach to managing a health and safety program, participants will have the opportunity to complete a hazard assessment, worksite inspections, incident investigations, and toolbox meetings. Uh, these are all critical components of a health and safety program just to ensure that everybody's complying and it kind of aids in communicating what's happening on the work site, whether it be a hazard that's come up um, and just sharing that knowledge with the workers on site. And then we have safety management. Uh, this is a one day course designed for owners, managers and supervisors or safety personnel who will be implementing or developing a company's health and safety management system. Uh, throughout this course, participants will gain an understanding on the purpose and benefits of having a highly functioning health and safety program. Um, they'll also worry, uh, learn about the components of the health and safety manual. So some of the topics that are included in a health and safety manual include proper facilitation and documentation of hazard assessments and incident investigations, personal protective equipment, just knowing the proper means of maintenance, um, storing them and inspection of and the lifespan of personal protective equipment, um, training, whether it be orientation, uh, site specific training through toolbox meetings or safety talks, um, that kind of speaks towards that. And then there's emergency preparedness uh, where you'll learn the proactive measures and requirements in accordance with Saskatchewan legislation. And then we also include a section on records and statistics and how it can benefit a company if it's used appropriately. And we go into some um, simulations as to how it can be utilized. Kieran, do you have anything to add to this section? I guess I, I do in a way. Um, this is good for anyone that's looking to implement health and safety within a company. So, it's a fantastic course that lays it all of, all of the elements out for for individuals to be able to plan implement and enforce a safety program so it kind of aligns with lots of the other programs it's it's also it's a mandatory course for the ncso program for core so if you are within companies that have either of those things it's um it's almost a paramount course to teach you how the safety programs laid out to best protect against due diligence in in the workplace. Thanks, Kieran. That's great. And uh, as Kieran mentioned, it is part of a requirement for our programs um, as well as the core program. It's also a requirement for the National Construction Safety Officer and Health and Safety Administrator programs, which we'll delve into a little deeper. Those are more individual um, programs. So for personal development. So we'll touch on that later here. Um, and just with the recent uh, implications of COVID, SCSA has transitioned to offering courses through um, instructor-led online training. So much like we are doing today here through Zoom. So anyone who is wanting to take courses, they are being offered through instructor-led online training. So if you're just uh, outside of the city limits, um, this is also a convenient way to partake in SCSA training. Um, and it's very interactive. The courses are recognized as they would be if you were to take classes at our association here. Um, they're recognized by industry and you would receive a certificate of completion like you would if you were to partake in classes at our office. So course content is still all the same. Um, there are activities throughout our courses and exams at the end just to kind of validate comprehension of the um, topics covered. Um, and we touched on this a little bit. This is just the professional designations um, for
for individuals. So there are two being offered within SCSA here. We have the National Construction Safety Officer, um, and this program requires three or more years of construction experience. And then we have the Health and Safety Administrator, um, very similar to the National Construction Officer with a few less requirements. Um, it, it's a great way to complement an NCSO. So some organizations may have an NCSO um, and also have an HSA, which would complement the NCSO. And HSAs don't require the three years of construction experience. Um, they're more of kind of an admin-based position where they would support the NCSO with kind of that, the paperwork and um, any other kind of uh, work that they would need assistance with. Um, so to apply for the NCSO, if you are interested, this can be done through our website. You would just fill out an application form and would be required to have a letter of experience um, that validates you do have the three years experience in construction trades. Um, and that would be required to have, um, you would have that experience within the past 10 years. Um, and just to kind of give you an overview of the cost for an NCSO to complete, if you're a member with SCSA to complete the courses, which there are 10 compulsory courses and two electives, it would cost roughly $700 just to complete the courses. On top of that, there is an exam, an NCSO exam that is required to be completed before you re uh, receive your designation. Um, this is a $50 fee for that, and it is proctored through SAS Polytech. So it is a two hour closed book exam. Um, if you are with a company that is not a member of SCSA, the, the cost is fairly substantially higher. So um, ranging almost near the $4,000 mark. So just something to consider. Um, and then with the health and safety administrator, very similar to the NCSO require, um, I believe it's nine compulsory courses. So, um, and there is some, homework as well that would be required out of completing these programs. So um, for particular courses, which we would guide you through on that. Kieran, do you have anything to add? Well, that covers it pretty well. I, uh, I think that the HSA is a very, like you say, it's a very good complement to the NCSO. Um, it is a good starting point as well. If you're looking to be, start out as a health and safety professional, and you don't have the experience, there's nothing you can do but get the experience somewhere. So a good foot in the door is to, to jump in and, and get that health and safety administrator. It's the path I took. Um, there's also different courses that's outside the SCSA, but these are paramount to getting started. So they're a good entry level program that's going to take you far. And if you look at a lot of job applications within the province of Saskatchewan, Canada, You'll notice for safety professionals, the NCSO designation is pretty much a standard. Perfect. I um, mean, we did cover a few courses that are requirements for this um, program, for these two programs. So just to kind of touch on a few um, key courses that would be required include safety management, um, the leadership for safety excellence, the women's train the trainer, the 2020 version, um, confined space respiratory protection and awareness, contractor training, BTT, as well as safety auditor and safety admin, which we haven't touched on, in addition to the SCOT training program, the orientation. And now we are getting into the programs um, related to organizations. So as we spoke of earlier, the certificate of recognition, also known as core program, um, and then the small employer certificate of recognition program. So the two are very similar uh, for the Small Employer Certificate of Recognition c -Corps program. That's for any company that has nine or less employees. For any company with 10 or more employees, they would be looking to um, complete the Certificate uh, of Recognition. Um, these programs are designed to verify a company has fully implemented a health and safety management system that meets national standards. Um, the objective of these programs are to reduce incidents and the associated human and financial costs around incidents. So you might, might be wondering why should a company become CORE or C-CORE certified? A few of the benefits is um, 
It aids in providing due diligence should a company be charged with an OHS offense. Um, say an incident occurred on a job site, um, they're at risk. So by having a health and safety program in place and having that paperwork to follow up on um, just kind of backs up a company should they run into an unfortunate uh, situation. It also demonstrates commitment to um, accident prevention um, and builds a safety-minded culture. Uh, it provides quality assurance of a company's health and safety management system and aids in injury prevention and cost savings. CORE is becoming um, widely known as an industry standard. Uh, several buyers of the construction services are including CORE certification uh, as a pre-bid qualification. So that's, that's a few of the reasons why a company would like to or may be considering going CORE or C-CORE certified. Kieran, do you have anything to add to that? Those are the those are the objective or the, the tangible solutions. But you look at the moral reasons, you've got people who are at work in a culture, like Cherry said, a culture where you're not afraid of the work you're doing. You can go to work and see that the paperwork's being done, see that people are stopping and looking at hazards. And you can be sure and feel safe at work. So that's one of the big things to look for. If you're looking at employers that have a core program, you're more likely to go to work and they're gonna care more. Potentially you're going to see that culture where people are inclusive and they're going to include you within that health and safety program, which is part of the law. But since the employers are informed of their duties, they will assist you more with that stuff as well. So just something to look at for potential employers is if they have a health and safety system that's been implemented. And that's what the core and the C-Core standard stands for. Perfect, thanks, Kieran. Um, and just some additional services that SCSA offers, um, kind of focusing and geared more towards our safety advisors. So Kieran might be able to speak to you guys a little more about this, but we do offer safety advice, as I mentioned earlier on, um, safety manual development. So someone who may be taking the safety management course, uh, might be looking to gain some assistance with that. Um, and we also provide assistance with safety audits and pre-audit checklists. Um, and then kind of a nifty um, option with SCSA is we do offer safety demonstrations. So um, upon request, safety advisors go out to construction work sites and present demos um, to a construction crew uh, we do have, I believe, currently five, correct me if I'm wrong, safety demos, Kieran. Um, the hand demonstration, the fall protection demo, kind of like the trailer we have displayed here. And then the eye, head, and asbestos awareness demo. Uh, did you have? We have a couple of VR demonstrations. We have the hazard recognition program. Um, obviously not available just due to the, the fact that the VRs require contact and close proximity to other people. Um, but yeah, we don't currently have the asbestos demonstration, um, but we do have lots of useful resources on our YouTube channel um, going over asbestos. I've done a couple of the training sessions myself. They're very good, they're informative. They have information on asbestos. If you're, if you're going into a company where asbestos is something you'll be dealing with, it's very, very important to be fully aware and then it's trained as well. And to talk more on advisory services, you don't have to be registered for a core program, C-Core. If you have questions about legislation, if you have questions about the laws of the workplace, you can always give us a call. We are non-judgmental and we will talk through any problem. Um, sometimes we can't get to the bottom of a problem, but we can always ask someone else. So we are industry experts but occasionally there are questions and things that we will find out for you. So if you have if you have any questions regarding stuff like that, don't hesitate, give us a call, we'll help you out. Um, yeah. Great, thanks, Kieran. In regional safety committees, uh, SCSA is also visible in the rural areas. So throughout regional safety committees, uh, we do have eight committees within Saskatchewan. So Outside of Regina and Saskatoon, we are also present in the Prince Albert, Yorkton, Esteban, Moose Jaw, Swift Current, and Lloyd Minister regions. 
Um, these are good re resources for information around construction health and safety. Um, it's composed of committees in each region, um, including employer and a worker rep, as well as a chair. Um, and they do hold regular meetings and information sessions just to kind of involve industry. Um, it's a good opportunity to bring forth concerns or trends within the construction industry and kind of discuss those items or topics. Um, it acts as a communication link for employers and the SCSA and allows members to share ideas of concerns within the industry. Um, it also acts as a liaison for construction members, providing an opportunity for members to communicate with other employers within their community. Um, some, some events that they do host, one that's coming up, uh, they host annually is the annual NIOSH events. Um, and that's in support of the North American Occupational Health and Safety Week. Uh, that'll be running for a week long, May 2nd to 8th. And I'm sure Karen can probably fill you guys more in on that. So the NIOSH week we've done, unfortunately in 2020, it was canceled or a lot of it was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But in previous years, we hold different, we go and attend different um, functions with, with our demonstrations. We set up booths and we try to get our information out as far reaches as possible. Um, participating in these events is, is important and you can have a whole lot of fun, learn a lot of things. I think the fall protection demonstration itself really, really sets a high standard for what you can learn through the NAOSH week. Not only that, there's other organizations, um, industry partners, play a big role in these events that, that help set up and, and give us something to, to look forward to. So um, 2021 should be a good year. And if you can attend any of those events, virtual or in person, if they are in that way, then that would be a great service to yourselves. Great, thanks, Karen. Um, and just relating back to the RSDs, Karen, um, mm -hmm just kind of for anybody who may be working in rural areas, are you able to speak more to kind of the speakers that we've had um, and kind of how things are working now with COVID um, and how things have transitioned to um, still maintain that relationship with those in the rural areas? For sure, we've been doing it through Zoom. So the same platform as this, um, occasionally through Microsoft Teams, and we've had a multitude of different people throughout the province. So we've had people talk about mental health, which is extremely important in a time like this. People get caught up in the statistics and, and we don't think about the people that have been affected negatively, which is probably a large sum of people. Um, so we have different, different speakers on that. We've had people talk about due diligence or workplace law, what happens in the court system. We've had um, occupational health and safety officers, so the people that work for OHS that that hand out summary offense tickets that that are the police, if you will, of health and safety, come out and talk. We've had chiropractors talk about musculoskeletal injuries, which is anything soft tissue, so muscles, tendons, ligaments. We've had all sorts of different people come to these events and they're free of charge, um, whether they're in person or virtual. And and if you aren't in one of these regions, reach out, find find out who that person is, the SESA representative, and take part in these things. The knowledge you'll gain from having industry experts and and perhaps not even if you're going to be in, in safety, but in in any sort of role, you can check out the speakers, vet it. And if you're interested mm -hmm. in the topic, just join in. And just a few other services that SCSA offers. Um, we do have safety resources on our website, um, including toolbox talks, which are just kind of uh, kind of prepared already for anyone who is required to present on toolbox talks. Uh, you just print them off and take them to your safety meeting. We do have safety forms that can be utilized or kind of critiqued to uh, function for what you need them for. Um, and we also offer online safety tips and updates. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. I know Karen spoke to the um, RSD committee meetings and bringing in speakers. Some of those are captured on the YouTube channel, I do believe. Karen, correct me if I'm wrong. 
I believe some of them are. Some of them, um, some are live only events like the due diligence because he was a lawyer, um, didn't want to do that recorded session. So some of them are on there, but not all of them. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, and we've included the YouTube channel for you guys here today. Um, Ariel will provide you guys with the package so that you have that link and you can access those resources. Uh, we do also offer a number of web-based training um, offerings through our e-learning portal. Uh, those are $25 a course, so they're fairly straightforward, easy to use. Um, they can take anywhere from a half hour up to two hours to complete. Um, some of the topics that are covered are construction health and safety, so working with power mobile equipment uh, and the safety features, any hazard awareness around that, as well as fall protection and electrical work. Um, we also cover environmental health and safety, um, capsulating on hazard recognition and control, fire safety, uh, mold awareness, and we also are offering right now uh, through CCOHS an asbestos awareness course at no cost. So that can be accessed through our SCSA website. Um, and then we do have some professional development courses that focus on ergonomics, um, contractor safety, incident investigations, teamwork, time management, supervisors, if you're working towards a supervisory role or you are in one and looking for some tips and tricks on that. Um, so that's our web-based training. And then we do have a safety advocate, which kind of covers a core bulletin um, and any safety focused news uh, in the industry right now. So, and what ha what's happening within SCSA. This is a biannual document that is available um, on our website through an e-newsletter as well. So if you're on the list to receive those letters or e-newsletters, e you would be receiving them. So, um, and that's released through June and December. And other services, just as Kieran mentioned, the other demo is the hazard identification VR and that's unique to SDSA. It was released in 2015. Um, utilized as a training tool in class as well as um, available to members just to kind of expose workers to um, hazards without putting them in harm's way and to kind of experience actual on the work site uh, hazard identification. Um, and we also have a guide to the OHNS legislation app. This is actually a great tool. Um, it's kind of simplifies the acts and regulations. Uh, it's great for anyone who's in a supervisory or leadership role. So it just aids in meeting the legislation and is a quick reference tool and focus on, focuses on some of the common issues in the construction safety with direct reference to the acts and regs. Karen, did you have anything to add? No, that that's, covers that pretty well. Okay, thanks. Um, and then we just have our price structure here. So this just goes through um, training, one day training, two day, two day training as most of our courses are either one or two days. Um, and it is tiered on a member versus non-member based. So instructor led training for members at one day is $50, at two days is $100. Um, all, the, all the prices listed here do not include GST. So that would be an addition on top of the price here. Um, and as you can see for non-members, the price is quite a bit higher at $300 for one day or $500 for two days. Um, and then we do have e-learning courses listed here, which I just uh, spoke to. That one is $25, whether you're a member or non-member. Same as Scott, it's $50, whether you're a member or non-member. That was the construction orientation training that I spoke to earlier on in the presentation. Um, Karen, do you want to speak to... Um, members and how maybe they could uh, possibly receive kind of some sponsorship with member companies? For sure. So you'll, you'll notice the discrepancy in the pricing member versus non-members. So that's not an individual person membership. So that relates back to the B rate code, which means building construction. So a, a non-member would be any company that does not have a B rate code um, or an individual who is not with a company with a B rate code. So what you can do to get member pricing is if you're looking to acquire the training through, through us, you can ask a construction company um, who potentially is looking at hiring you 
to to take the training your on your own time and then you you can receive member pricing so that's what we call sponsorship um, on the other end of that if you are hired by a company that has a b rate code they can also pay for the training um, so potentially look for those resources before jumping into paying the larger price um, things like that and you can also look at the can sask job grant for individual training as well if you if you can't go through our membership and then we do have two offices one's located in regina on henderson drive and then one in saskatoon on quail avenue so i myself work out of the regina office and kieran works out of the saskatoon office um, we do have our phone numbers here if anybody wants to reach out as well as our website is listed here now we have time to go over some questions. If anybody wants to um, pop any questions in the question and answer box at the bottom. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So now we will take questions and don't be shy. And remember, no question is stupid because if you need to know something, then you need an answer. So it doesn't matter how you think the question doesn't make any sense. You can type it. We will make some sense out of it and give you the correct answer. Well, not me, the team from SCSA. All right, so go ahead and start with me in your questions. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have a question here and I will, you can go ahead and read it, um, Sherry or, or Karen and answer, please, thanks. So on your eight, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, is asking if the HSA course will be able, if she'll be able to get the job right away um, if they don't have any prior experience. So to give you a real life um, experience of mine, that's how I started out in the industry. I started with a health and safety administrator. I didn't immediately land a job in health and safety, but the key is to keep looking. I've seen multiple job opportunities recently that have asked for NCSO slash HSA. Um, oftentimes it's paired with other duties such as administrative role, but you can work your way into that, into that industry with, with that job title. Um, so to answer that, you won't necessarily get a job right away, but if you keep applying, you will eventually land a job in in that realm. Thanks, Karen. Sometimes they're a little bit shy, so I'll wait a little for them to <laughs> ask the questions. It's, it's no worries. Any questions you might have, ask away. We're we're here for your ser for for our services for you. We're here to help people out. We. As a nonprofit member-based organization, our goal is to help as many people as possible. We want workers to be safe. We want people in, in the field. This industry is important to us. So, um, so we have another question here from Anuri. Um, just with regards to the SCSH, SC, or sorry, pardon me, SHSA course, is it delivered through SAS Polytech? So these are delivered through our own internal trainers. Um, the only thing that is delivered through SAS Polytech is that examination or the, the NCSO exam at the end. Um, other than that, we train internally. We have our own trainers with a wealth of experience and knowledge that deliver the courses for the HSA program. There are, however, a couple of electives courses for those programs that can be delivered outside the SCSA, for example, first aid, um, as we don't train that one, we would look for a certain specific company to do it. And then we would call that the elective. So while persons are thinking about their questions, um, I just wanna remind the clients who are here who have not yet done their SCOT training that you can um, contact SCSA directly to do the SCOT training, or I'm pretty sure you're all clients of Open Door, well, the employment unit, and you can connect with us also to do that SCOT training. 
just tell your employment counselor that you're interested in doing it. Um, maybe closer to the end of this month, maybe in another two weeks, um, I'm gonna do a Scott training um, session and usually, usually it's just about two hours for pretty much two days. And it's just to give you an overview or, you know, whet your appetite into doing the course. So by the time you get around to doing it on your own, then you are fully engaged in the course. All right, so I'll stop talking and give you some more time to type your questions. I was just going to mention to anyone who is interested in taking courses through SCSA, um, we do offer them from Monday through to Friday. They do typically run from around 8.30 till 4.30. Um, and then when COVID restrictions are lifted, we do have two classrooms um, in each Saskatoon and Regina office where we do hold and facilitate courses. But in the meantime, they are all offered through Zoom. Um, and you can check out the list of course offerings on our website at um, scsaonline.ca. Um, and for anybody who does have questions um, that do maybe come up after today's session, you can reach either Kieran or myself and our contact information is displayed on the screen for anyone interested. So we got another question. Um, which courses on or online and how long do they take to complete? So um, for a complete list of our courses online, you can go to our website at www.scsaonline.ca um, and it, it will give you a list of those. Um, we do have a number of course offerings, so I didn't go into depth on those today. Um, they take roughly about a half an hour to two hours to complete, depending on your knowledge within the topic that you are working on. Um, and they do cover anything from construction, health and safety to environmental um, safety, as well as anything that you're maybe looking towards professional development in with incident investigation being more specific to health and safety, um, supervisory skills, um, and then with regards to environmental hazards, speaking towards the hazard recognition and control, just understanding the system and how it works, um, fire safety, so any type of on-site work that involves environmental, um, so mold awareness, asbestos awareness, those are also available. Um, and then we have construction health and safety courses, which pertain towards your power mobile equipment. Um, there is a number of courses uh, geared towards that topic, as well as fall protection and electrical work. Does that answer your question? Karen, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think we just missed the in-course, the in-class course length. I know you mentioned it previously. Most of the courses are full day with the exception of area work platform is a half day course. Thank you. Okay, so I have a question, Sherry. You mentioned about electrical. How old um, do you start taking clients for that? What age? Um, we don't have a limit on age. So um, anyone's able to take the courses. We just wouldn't set a standard on stating that they're now certified to get onto a job site. That would be directed by legislation and the standards around that. Yeah, so those courses that are online, the $50 and $25 online courses, it doesn't have um, a registration for it. Or I guess it does, but it doesn't discriminate on the age. But it, it could be a good course for someone, let's say you have um, a 15 year old son or daughter or yourself looking to get into the courses it's a good awareness piece all of those is are strictly awareness though they don't grant you a certification like if the electrical course if you want to learn about voltage watts amps it's not going to certify you but it will take you to another level of understanding to, to discern or to find out what cords are dangerous um, what to look for and stuff like that Thank you. Okay. 
um, if we have no more questions, is there anything that you'd like to, before we, you know, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you would, any of you would like to say? Um, just iterating that Kieran and I are both um, available and can be reached by email or phone if you do have any questions following today's session. Um, our, our website is also mentioned in the PowerPoint document that I had provided Ariel with, which I'm sure she'll provide to all of you following today's session if she hasn't already. So um, do feel free to reach out to us. We are a resource here for you guys. So um, like Kieran said several times, uh, we don't uh, judge, so um, we're here to serve you guys. Okay, and the last word from you, Kieran? <laughs> no, I, it kind of covers it all. I just, construction such a, it's such a good industry. We need more people in the construction industry that are, that are, have safety at the top of mind. And that's what employers are looking for, is to add to their culture. They're not looking for, for certain things. They're looking for diverse people that have, good understanding of safety and looking to get on job sites and it's really really important that as as people we we get this training and and we understand the risks because we don't we all want to go home a little cut on our hand as small as it may be might be inconvenient it might hurt us if we're cooking or playing with our kids or dogs or cats anything like that so getting into safety as soon as possible not even just as a safety professional but understanding the, the rules around it. It's really important if you're looking to get into construction or any other field. Okay, so I just wanna say thanks to both of you for coming. I learned a lot, especially this last, um, the last question I asked about the age group. So um, here we have um, counselors who um, have students. And so this is something that I'm going to be talking to them about. So, you know, maybe their students would be interested. So that was good news or important news or information for me. So again, I just wanna thank everyone for joining today. Um, we could not have done it without you. Thank you for staying with us for the entire hour. And a big thanks to our presenters. Again, you did a fantastic job and we appreciate you and these courses that you mentioned, as I said, um, so to our clients, you can stay tuned because I'm going to be looking at some of these courses and start incorporating more in, you know, the services that we provide. All right, so thanks again, everyone. And for everyone who is in the webinar, as Sherry said, I'm going to um, email you the PowerPoint. So, you know, you can go back over it you have any question, Sherry or Kiran will be more than happy to assist or will be available to assist you. All right, so take care, everyone. Have a good morning. <laughs> Thanks again, Ariel, for the opportunity and for inviting us to today's session. I uh, hope everybody was able to take something away from it. I'm sure they did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. Take care. Thanks.